Good day viewers, this is 300 plus academy where all we do is exams tutoring, ensuring that you ace your next exam. Still on the business of NECO 2024 uh, chemistry practical. Uh, in this particular question here, this is a lecture uh, video three as it relates to uh, volumetric analysis. We were given A as H2SO4 and uh, concentration of 0.07 mole per dm cube. B, we were given 16.1 gram per dmq, which means we were given the mass concentration here, but the carbonate is in the form of S2CO3.10H2O. Not to forget that in the very first uh, video lecture, the link to that uh, lecture video is in the description of uh, this lecture video. You recall that we have said that our VA is equal to 20.53 cm cube. That is our average a tighter value haven't performed the, the experiment so uh that way we've been able to uh perform all of a as you can see in the question on your screen we have dealt with everything that has to do with a now question b here states that from your results and the information provided calculate the concentration of b in mole per dm cube so uh, for Roman figure 1, B Roman figure 1, we're looking for CB. But this is our VA. Our CA from the question is 0 0.07 mole per dm cube. And our NA from the equation, if you look at the question, um, it has its equation. It is 1. NA is 1. Uh, NB is also uh, equals to 1. I am looking for CB in mole per dm cube. And my VB here is the 25 cm cube uh, of the uh, pipette. So in this case, what this means is that CAVA over CB, VB equals to what? NA over NB. CA here is 0 0.07 times VA here is 20.53 divided by CB here is what we are looking for times VB here is uh, 25 equals to 1 over 1. So CB here will mean 0 0.07 times 20.53 divided by 25. If we compute this, we are going to get 0 0.057 mole per dm cube. That way, we'll say we've been able to answer uh, the very first question they're talking about B1. Then we we're told to look for the molar mass of uh, S to CO3.10 H2O in gram uh, per mole. Molar mass of S to CO3. Now, talking about uh, now talking about to B2, we're told to look for the molar mass of x to co3 dot 10h to recall that um concentration in mole per dm cube equals to concentration in gram per dm cube divided by molar mass so molar mass will then come here molar mass will be concentration in gram per dm cube is 16.1 gram per dm cube divided by Concentration in mole per dm cube is 0.057 mole per dm cube. This, this of level with gram per mole. So 16.1 divided by 0.057. We're going to get 282, 282.4 gram per mole. That way we've been able to calculate uh question two there now for question three we're told to look for the percentage by mass of x question three percentage by mass of x in x to co3 dot 10 h so what this means it's very simple if you look at s2 here that's going to mean 2x co3 here if we calculate 12 this is 60 
plus 10. H2 is 18. So that will mean 2x plus um, 240 equals to the total molar mass as the molar mass is 282.4. So 2x, which talks about the x that is there, is 282.4 minus 240, you know, and 2x, therefore, will be 42.4. So the percentage by mass of x, percentage of x, here is going to be 42.4 out of a total of 282.4 times 100. So that will give us 15. So that will give us 15.01 that is the percentage by mass of x in SCO3.10 issue and that ends question uh, 3 so moving on to question 4 we were told to give a reason for the following we were told to give a reason why uh, we use a small quantity of indicator during acid based titration why is it that the quantity of indicator is usually small very easy the answer to that is so that we obtain a sharp and clear color change at the end point in this titration you know once we prepare the s to co3 dot 10 is true labeled b and we add our metal orange indicator the color will be yellow now at the end point by the time we begin to run in the acid the color will change from yellow to pink so the reason why we are using very small amount of indicator is so that we obtain consistent tighter value or consistent endpoint that's to obtain a sharp or precise and a clear color change at the end point now the other question says uh we should give a reason why uh, obtaining at least two sets of readings for titration experiment we should give a reason why we must obtain at least two sets of readings for titration the reason if you can see in the table displayed on your screen the reason why we you know repeat you know the titration the readings is so that we can get concordant titers or what we call consistent titer value and that just answers that and with that we have come to the end of this lecture talking about 2024 neco practical chemistry from myself and the entire team it's bye for now